As many of you know, the most recent Transformers film, Transformers Age of Extinction, was a colossal box office success, bringing in over $1.1 billion at the worldwide box office. Paramount Pictures assembled a special writer's room to brainstorm and plot out the future of the series, and it appears that the first fruits of their labor has been set. According to a report in Deadline, Paramount is now planning two feature films to start. The first will be Transformers 5, which will once again star Mark Wahlberg with director Mike Michael Bay in talks to direct once again. And the second is an animated feature which will serve as an origin story for the Transformers set on Cybertron. Academy Award winner Akiva Goldsman is set to write Transformers 5 while Ant-Man scribes Andrew Bearer and G- Gabriel, excuse me, hello, Gabriel Ferrari will script an animated origin story. Mark, what do you take away from this Transformers news? I take away from this Transformers news and I'm really excited for the animated version and I am so disappointed by Transformers 5 with Mark Wahlberg and probably Michael Bay coming back because we were getting excited as Transformers fans fairly recently when we heard there was a writer's room going on and everybody's yes. throwing ideas around and Spielberg's involved and we're going to reboot this thing and we're going to do it right this time. We're not just in there for a cash grab and to sell Bud Light. We're actually going to try to make a story worthy of the Transformers lore. And now it just seems like, and I don't want to throw Wahlberg under the bus or anybody else, but when you're attached to what Transformers Age of Extinction was, and that's what it appears it's going to be from Michael Bay coming back to direct, it's just disappointing. It's like, I don't, how many more of these movies do we have to sit through that make a billion dollars worldwide before somebody's able to say, we just know that the quality of these movies isn't what they should be? Yeah, I, I cannot help but feel a little bit of disappointment. By this, because you're right. When we heard about this writer's room they were putting together, where they met for weeks, it included Steven Spielberg, it had Academy Awards. On top of the people that Sinead already mentioned, you had The Walking Dead creator, Robert Kirkman, in there. You had uh, Art Markram and Matt Holloway, the guys who wrote Iron Man. You had uh, Jeff Pinker, writer for Fringe and Lost. You had like Kevin Nolan, the, the writer of uh, Black Hawk, Hawk Down. You have... Uh, Geneva Robertson and Christina Hodson, who write The Blacklist. You have Stephen Denight, who was a showrunner on Spartacus, one of my all-time favorite shows, and the first season one of Daredevil. You hear this. You, they collected this big group of talent. We made a big deal about it on this show. This big group of talent, and you talk about how we are going to be investing in all the 14 billion years of Transformers history. We're going to find stories to tell. We're going to like kind of reboot the franchise. And then what is the first thing that we hear? Transformers 5 with Mark Wahlberg returning and probably Michael Bay directing again. Now, Michael Bay took to his Twitter and says, look, I, it's, that's not a done deal. I'm talking with Steven Spielberg about it right now. He's going to do it. He's definitely going to do gonna it. He's going to do it. And then the other thing was an animated movie. Oh, that, that could be cool, but really? Weeks of this writer's room with all this talent. And what you come out of it with is Transformers 5. We didn't need your writer's room for you to tell us you're doing Transformers 5 with Mark Wahlberg and probably Michael Bay again. But really, the the big byproduct of this huge deal is, and we're going to get an animated movie. I cannot help but feel let down. Now, there's nothing in the story that says, and that's it. Nothing else is coming out of this. I'm, I'm sure maybe more will come out. But good heavens, don't bury the lead. Like, if you're going to come out after all this and we have all this anticipation and the first thing you come out and tell us is Transformers 5 in an animated movie, I cannot help but feel really let down. I think there was a lot of great ideas that were bounced around in that writer's room. And I think that everybody was sitting around and they were pitching ideas for stuff and it all sounded great. And then you have news that Michael Bay is interested in returning and doing Transformers 5. And I think a lot of those ideas probably got shelled for whatever he wants to do. So you had this nice Abraham Lincoln setup where it's just everybody contributing ideas, but then a dictator comes in and is like, ah, no, no, you know what? We are just going to continue the story that I've been telling for four really awful movies that get worse and worse every time you watch them. So it's disappointing for me to hear. Plus, I mean, look, as a Transformers fan, I want to love Transformers stuff. It actually dampens my excitement for the animated feature or anything else, knowing that we're continuing with this world that has been so disappointing thus far. I'm trying in my head to think of the end of Age of Extinction, how we can spin that into something that at least is a passable movie. We know the trailer is going to be good. We know you and me are going to be talking about the trailer. And Man, man, Transformers 5, they are doing it right this time. I just don't have that confidence it's going to happen. Yeah, I wish... And look, Sinead messaged it off the top. The last Transformers movie, worst of the bunch. That's saying something. Mm -hmm. 
made over $1.1 billion. Now, everyone wants to point at that and say, see, it doesn't need to be good. Do you know how much money that movie would have made if it was good? Mm -hmm. If people were talking about it positively? That movie, easily, blink of an eye, $1.5 billion. Easy, another four, five, six hundred million would have been added to that. Because people, what it showed me was as terrible as these Transformers movies have been. And I'm still a big fan of the first one. I will never deny I I really enjoyed the first one. But as terrible as these last number of Transformers movies, especially the last one, have been, and it's still making $1.1 billion, that, folks, Paramount, that means the audience wants Transformers. Give us something good, and you won't believe how much money you're making. This was a big hit for you. Forget big hit. We're talking potential Avatar numbers here. If you gave us something that people want to go back and watch again. And I'll throw a silver lining at you, though, because on this show, I do nothing if not contribute great wardrobe choices and hope <laughs> for the future. Is it what if Michael Bay knocks this, this smaller movie he's doing about the terrorist attacks in Libya? What if he knocks that out of the park? Benghazi. The, 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 the Benghazi attacks, the 13 hours or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, 13 hours. What if he knocks that out of the park? But here's the thing. This is even if he does, even if he does, I thought he did a great job with Pain and Gain. You know, yeah. he he did another film, and some people didn't love it. Some people really love it. But I, I thought he did a really good job with Pain and Gain. So he he comes out, puts out a movie like that, and goes, oh, see, he's found his groove again. But it's like when he goes back to Transformers, it's like, I don't give an F. Mm -hmm. I like, whatever, just, uh, just do that and then give it to the guys at ILM and let them make it look spectacular. I mean, Michael Bay knows action. He does. I'll always give him that. And that's why I thought he was a good choice for directors for uh, Transformers at first. But even if 13 Hours comes out and it crushes it, my hope won't get any higher because I thought he did a really good job with Pain and Gain and look what happened once he got back to Transformers. I just feel like, you know what? I was Michael Bay's biggest supporter when they first announced him, maybe his only supporter, when they first announced him as the director for the first Transformers movie. I'm off that bus. I'm not off the Michael Bay bus entirely. I still like a number of his films and I'll be looking forward to what he does next. I just think it's time for him to move off Transformers. So we'll see.